Assalamu alaikum. How you guys doing? Welcome back to the Bayside Jewel. And today I'm gonna, gonna talk about a couple of things. And I got a video that I definitely want to share with you guys, but that'll probably be on my next video, not this one. But right now, I got to tell you, um, wow, I just watched a pretty good video with Go Black to Africa. You guys really need to check that out. You know, I, I feel the need to, um, to come on here and, uh, yeah, encourage people to, uh, go, go watch that video because he's got a sister on there talking about what she's experiencing in uh, uh, Ghana. And I'm telling you, about, I swear, about 99% of what she's talking about, I've also experienced it here in uh, Gambia. Yeah. And, you know, I'm always telling you guys how nice the people are and um, that Gambia is really a peaceful place. It really is, but it can also be a bundle of stress if you uh, don't keep your circle tight. You got to keep your t a circle tight because, you know, everybody will try to get into your circle because especially if you're like coming from America, for some reason they think that you have it all, you know. And a lot of times, just like the sister said uh, in that video with Go Black, a lot of times we, we come over here with, with you know, our ideas and just enough uh, to know that we can, we can make it, you know, we can sustain ourselves. But, you know, when you come over here, people try to latch on to you, you know, they, that's what they do. They try to latch on to you, try to be your best friend all over the place, everywhere you go, really, you'll be... People be trying to give you their number. They'll try to ask for your number. You guys, I'm telling you that, um, yeah, the system, go check out that video. Uh, but, yeah, they'll try to latch on to you. And when they latch on to you, it's, it's like for life, they, they, you know, they ain't trying to let go. You know, even at the uh, uh, police station, a lot of times, you can go by there and, and they got, you know, a big confrontation there in the police department because uh, she stole my two bob or he stole my two bob. Yeah, they call us two bobs and um, they be, man, they be hardcore about it. It'd be like, you know, she took him from me. I had him first, you know, and that's how they, they see us. You know, so it's it's not you know it's not really cool to 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 have a wide circle of friends here because everybody, you know, from my experience, it seems like they always want something. You know, they're not helping you for nothing. You know, they're friendly, and they're always offering you help for something. It's because, like the sister said. Uh, they want something, whether it's carrying your bags or um, opening doors or showing you where a place is or something like that. It's because they're expecting something. Nothing is free. You know, their help, I, I haven't experienced any free help over here. All the help that I've gotten, I paid for. That's true. All the help. So, you know, when you come over here, you might be coming to a place in your mind where you're being around your own people, right? You're going to be surrounded and you're going to be so loving and, you know, you know, honored to be here, you know, but they're feeling the same way. They're honored that you're, you're here also because they think you got some money and y'all know that, you know, we, we ain't exactly rich. We're not rich people. We may plan a way to get out of Babylon, <clears throat> you know, that's what we do. We plan a way to get out of Babylon and it takes a lot of preparation, you know, for us to do that. 
But to them, it's like we got it like that. You know, we can just get up and go and come to the motherland, you know. I can't tell you how many phones um, that I've helped people with, people asking me for, you know, help with them having a phone or I've heard every excuse. And uh, but last I counted, I think I, I bought like five or six phones for people, you know, five or six phones. Yeah, they're always in need of phones over here. So I've also let me see. Someone asked me to buy them a motorcycle. I helped them with their bike, their motorcycle. And then, let me see, about two or three people asked me uh, to buy them cars. Yeah, cars. <laughs> you know, vehicles. I'm like, yeah, yeah, I ain't got it like that, homie. <laughs> I really don't. You think I got it going on like that, but I don't. I don't have money to just buy you a, a car, you know. But, you know, I kind of have a um, kind of a hard time expressing uh, what you may experience, you know, uh, from the pe people over here. Besides them being very nice. Yeah, a lot of them are very, very nice and treat, treat you uh, very proper, you know. But a lot of times it's because they want something from you. A lot of times. So you have to guard your your pockets and your spending. You really do because I have done heard every excuse from father, mother, sick, you know, funerals and things like that. I done heard it all just like the sister said in the video. So, you know, when I seen that video, it kind of blew me away because I swear, I would say 99% mate, it may very well be 100% of what she is talking about. I've experienced it here, you know. Um, Gambia is, um, you know, kind of like a developing country, you know, but there's not a lot of money here. There's not. So people being a, a, a crunch, you know, a crunch for money. So you can experience some of anything over here. Any kind of excuse, you know, and they can give you an excuse that would actually make you feel sorry and you'll help. But then when your money's out, yeah, sorry about that. Boy, it got so hot there. I shut my, shut my camera down. So, but yeah, like I was saying, uh, the sister is speaking a lot of truth. You guys really need to check that video out. Go Black to Africa. And I think the title of the movie is, uh, of the video is, um, African American Woman Marries a Ghanaian Man. Something like that. Make sure you check it out because the sister is, she, woo, blah, 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 blah. she's like letting it out. She really is. You guys, and then, you know, it's like you help, help these people. And then a lot of times they'll be the ones to fuck you up, really. They'll dog you out. Or when you start telling them, no, you can't do certain things, they'll become pretty much like your enemy, really. They can get really evil, you know. But, you know, how we do it there, you know, we're up on all the game, you know. And uh, this stuff over here is like 1972, the games they try to run. But <clears throat> because it's so old, we can't even imagine people are still trying this this so crap so it slides through a lot of times you know because <clears throat> we don't got so far you know beyond you know peeping the game you know but when you come over here you're all excited because you're in Africa and you want to help your people and stuff but and it, which is cool but you can't be taken advantage of and they'll a lot of them will certainly try to do that so Make sure you uh, check that video out. The other thing you guys I wanted to share with you is, uh, you know, there's uh, some crazy, crazy, crazy stuff going on, man. You know, when I think about all the brothers that have been uh, incarcerated uh, due to the cause of some kind of drugs, even a little small little bit of marijuana, you know, a little marijuana ain't gonna hurt nobody. 
but they lock them up, tuck them away, throw away the key, you know. And I came across a video where these people are just out in the opening, right? Talking about they're saving lives and they are distributing whatever drug you want right out in public, right out in public, outside. And the, uh, you know, police don't even mess with them. Don't even mess with them. Some of them have been arrested, but they got right back out doing the same thing. You got tables laid out. You come sign sign your name and, and what whatever kind of drug you want. Yeah, and it's absolutely free. Yeah, absolutely free. This is in uh, Canada. Yeah, this is in Canada. So I wanted to share that video with you guys. Um, if this video isn't too long, I'll put it on the, on the back of this. Uh, but yeah, it's crazy, man. So, you know, we've been so uh, controlled, man, when others could basically do whatever the hell they want to do without being harassed. Now, their point of view is, shut up. Their point of view is uh, they're saving lives because so many people are overdosing. So what they say they do is they have the proper amount of dosage that people can take that will save their lives. That's why they're continuing to do it, irregardless if there's a law uh, that tells them to, to, they can't do it. They're still doing it. Just trips me out. And, and, and also, hey, dude. Wait till I start talking, and then he wants to start talking too. But anyway, um, yeah, there's another uh, uh, a group of people in uh, British Columbia. They're doing the same thing, you guys, and they're not being arrested. And they're right out in the opening, and they're opening up shops where you can co go buy crack, fentanyl, or, or meth whatever drug you're on, and they're not being arrested. I, th I think you guys really need to see this because it just goes to show you how law, how their color of law applies to us, but it don't apply necessarily to everybody. So you guys stay tuned and um, let me see what I can do with this clip, okay? All right, peace. We have sold 200 grams of cocaine, heroin, and methamphetamine that have caused zero overdoses. A Vancouver group says it's been selling safe and tested cocaine, crystal meth, and heroin for one month, as many across BC mark Overdose Awareness Day on Wednesday. The Drug Users Liberation Front says Health Canada rejected its application to run a drug compassion club and fulfillment center, but it's selling the safe supply anyways. Co-founder Eris Nix compares the current drug crisis to alcohol prohibition, pointing out how toxic liquor was before government regulation. If you open a bottle or can of alcohol and drink from it, it could kill you. The government's response, the equivalent response would be that you can go to your doctor and be prescribed three light beers. That is a nonsense scenario. We need a change in the way we approach this crisis. The B.C. government only offers pharmaceutical grade alternatives to street drugs, while the federal government still hasn't found a system to procure a safe supply, more than a year after an expert panel's recommendations. B.C.'s chief coroner says more than 10,000 people have died since the toxic health crisis was declared an emergency. The Minister of Health and Addiction says, while we have been adding treatment and harm reduction services at an unprecedented rate, the increasing illicit drug toxicity has outstripped our addition of new overdose prevention services. Health Canada has approved the decriminalization of small amounts of some drugs in B.C. That takes effect in January. 
I'm gonna open up a crack store. That is what a Vancouver man is planning to do by the end of the month, intending to sell meth, crack, heroin, and more in an effort to save lives. This because since 2016, more than 10,000 people in British Columbia have died from drug overdoses. And so this guy says he'll sell safer drugs to users tested for contaminants. And with each purchase, he'll provide information and education on how to quit. What are your thoughts? The Canadian government temporarily legalizing drugs for personal use in British Columbia. The country's Minister of Mental Health and Addictions issuing a statement saying people found possessing drugs like opioids, cocaine or meth for personal use in British Columbia won't be arrested, fined or have the drugs taken. Canada declared B.C.'s high overdose rates a public health emergency back in 2016. And the decriminalization plan starts next January, runs for three years, and health officials say that they will conduct comprehensive monitoring of the program. Artfully called the B.C. Pain Society. Owner Chuck Varabios has something none of his competitors does. Canada's first marijuana vending machine. The machine pumps out bags of weed, ranging from a gram for six bucks to a half ounce for eighty dollars. So Chuck, what I want to know is how many times a day do you have to do this? Oh, four or five or six. I, I could use somebody full-time filling and maintaining it. Chuck already had a vending machine business, but after helping a friend dying of cancer get marijuana to treat his pain, he saw a need. And when the police announced they wouldn't bust dispensaries, he saw a business opportunity, and a great one. How much revenue is this thing generating? Let's put it this way, it's um, six figures since we've been open, but that further than that, I'm not positive. But you're talking about hundreds of thousands of dollars. Yes. From this machine. Yes. In a matter of months. Yes. It's a members only machine. Patients need to be 18 or over and consult with a nurse or a notary to prove they have a medical need for marijuana. Okay, okay and if you guys want, we have more gumballs going in right now. What's in here is one gram of high quality marijuana for $4. Chuck, you've got a great business set up here, I can see that, but I don't want to spoil the party. It's illegal. Yes, according to the Criminal Code of Canada. Well, that's, that's, that's the law. Yeah, well, yes, we live in Vancouver. Vancouver City Police and the City Hall has allowed us to regulate our own business. Uh, Vancouver City Police have made it clear um, that this is not a priority to them. They came in, they looked around, uh, they gave us some safety pointers, how to keep our staff and our customers safe, and they left happy. All right, there you have it. Now tell me what you think about that. That's kind <clears> of <throat> not right, is it? But yeah, so that's what they're doing. But anyway, at this time here, I'd like to say thank you guys for watching and um, thank all my subscribers. Thank my uh, latest subscribers. You guys are really helping me just by uh, subscribing. I appreciate it. Um, and that's all I have for now. Till next time, I'm your host, Brother Bay from the Bayside Jewel. Assalamu alaikum.